Hey everyone, Tim Schofield here. It's time for another PC build. I'm really excited for this one. It should be a top of the line build with Intel's newest 10th gen Core i9 processor. And if you look at the different parts I'll be using behind me, you'll notice I don't have a GPU. So no graphics card in this build. I just realized that console gaming is overall just better than PC gaming. Okay, totally kidding. Just wanted to see how mad I could get you guys. Just kidding. I do have a 2080 Ti uh, in another build already that I will be using for this build. Anyways, let's get started on the build. Gonna show you all the different parts that I use and then of course the finished product with some gaming and some testing as well. Let's get started. The motherboard I'll be using is the Z490 Aris Master Gaming motherboard, which has a couple things that I'm looking for and need. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Now, of course, from Intel, the 10th Gen Core i9-10900K processor. I do have the i5. We'll save that for a later build. Keep an eye out for that video. And here's a look at the motherboard. I would recommend having it on top of the motherboard box or a different surface. Let's get that i9 processor installed. A quick close-up of the back of the processor and the front as well, if you were interested. Setting it on the motherboard, just be careful. Make sure the arrows line up. Make sure it's nice and secure and then lock it in place. On this motherboard, just took off that cover, revealing the processor, and we can actually put a cooler on this. We'll do that in just a second. Onto the RAM, and to be honest, this is probably the best looking RAM I have seen. This is the Dominator Platinum RGB RAM from Corsair. Everything I'm using is linked down below, and the white RAM just looks so clean. It accents really well on any of the other colors I'm using in this build. And there are also individually controlled RGB lights at the top of the RAM, so it will give it a great look towards the end of the build. Installing, very simple, snap the RAM on in, and again, just look how clean that white colored RAM looks. We have to make sure this new Intel processor stays cool, so we're using the NZXT Kraken Z63 liquid cooler, which has a display where you can customize certain things once we get that installed. Inside, you've got your cooler, your radiator, and some fans. The cooler itself has the thermal paste on it, which I have had no problems using in the past, so I don't put any extra on. However, just in case I run into any heating issues, I do have an extra tube if needed. Got the bracket installed on the motherboard and set the cooler down onto the CPU and screwed it on in. Onto what we're gonna be looking at, the H510 Elite Mid-Tower case from NZXT. And again, I'm a big fan of NZXT products. I used it in my last build. Uh, this is a little bit of a different case. I really like how they have RGB fans on the front and clear tempered glass along with side clear tempered glass so you can see into the build. The back has a lot of different spaces for cable management, which I always struggle with. However, I feel like with this case, I'll be able to do a better job. There's also slots for SSDs on the back. We have to power all of this awesome technology. Let's use the ASUS ROG Thor 1200 watt platinum power supply, which will last us a really long time. This will power a lot. I know Marcelino over in the Discord said it's gonna power his entire apartment. Feel free to join the Discord. I'll link to that in the description if you're interested in joining. In my opinion, pretty unnecessary, but this power supply does have an RGB light on the side. I don't even think I'm gonna be able to see it once I finish this build. Setting the motherboard on into our case just gets it in place and we can go ahead and screw it on in. I also did screw in that power supply so that is ready to go. With this specific case, I'm going to mount the radiator on the front panel as opposed to the top. And I'm actually a fan of the front panel radiators. I actually prefer it in general, a little easier for that cable management. However, I also do have a fan up top. We might have to change that other CPU fan to an RGB fan to match. One thing I love about the motherboard from Eris is how clean it looks. It actually has a brushed metal look, which does come out and reveals three M.2 slots four SSDs, which I actually do have three of them. Now, Western Digital sent over one of my favorite SSDs, actually, the Western Digital Black SN750, which I used in my last build as well, and I've been a big fan of it. Uh, it works really well, and the price is very fair for what you get out of these M.2 drives. Now, this motherboard has heatsink built in. However, if you don't have one that does, the SN750 from Western Digital Black actually offers a model with heatsink on top of it. 
Screwing in all three means we have three terabytes of storage just from these M.2 drives alone. Wanted to give you a SATA SSD option. So the 870 QVO from Samsung is their new SATA drive, uh, which I will go ahead and install. As you can tell, this model is two terabytes. And yes, as promised, I have a GeForce RTX 2080 Ti GPU to install, which I'm pulling out of an older build, technically not really that old. Simple to install, just line it up with one of the PCI Express slots and then go ahead and get your cables plugged on in and route it to the back of your case. And overall, here's a look at the back. Not perfect, however, much better cable management than I have done in the past. I'm actually kind of proud of it. Without that front tempered glass, here's just a quick look on the inside. I actually will add a few different things to this build, including some colored cables and an RGB fan. On the back of the build, down at the bottom is your PSU. In the middle, the GPU for video output. And then a look at the different connectors. You've got your ethernet, your USB, USB-C, and a big one. It actually comes with an antenna so you can get Wi-Fi via this motherboard, which is I know is nice for uh, some people. And it is Wi-Fi 6 compatible, which is pretty big. Nice that it will future-proof this motherboard's Wi-Fi. Quick peel of our NZXT cooler display. And flipping on the power did boot up the PC right away. It went on and off a couple different times. It's a little nerve wracking. However, it did boot up for the first time right away. You'll see those RGB lights coming on from the RAM, the fans, and of course the CPU cooler. It brought us in the BIOS where I was able to confirm all of the specs, including that i9 CPU, 32 gigs of RAM and more. Time to install an OS. Let's get Windows on this PC and continue through. And here's our final build. I added a couple extra white cables, PCI Express and motherboard, along with an NZXT back RGB fan. Again, the lights can be customized, whether it's RAM, RGB, even the display on that NZXT cooler. And thankfully, I will not run out of storage anytime soon with those three Western Digital Black M.2 SSDs. Those will handle all of my game installs. I installed Windows on those as well, just because that SSD is so fast. Also, I do have that Samsung 2 terabyte SSD installed, along with an extra 7200 RPM hard drive, uh, just with one terabyte for some data storage. And before we get to gameplay and other things about the PC, let's look at the peripherals. So I've been using the Corsair Virtuoso RGB Wireless SE headset. And again, like the RAM, you can customize that RGB on the side of the headset. You can change a different color. You can even have it sync up with that RAM if you'd like to. And I've been a big fan of this headset. It's extremely premium. Even the USB-C cable that comes with it's very premium. The mic sounds very good. You can, does have a mute button so you can mute it very quickly. Uh, overall, I've been very happy with this headset. As for the keyboard, I've been using the SteelSeries Apex Pro. I do really like the RGB customization because it's a little more subtle than a lot of gaming keyboards out there. Uh, it, it's nice how much the keycaps actually cover the color in person. And of course, I like the feedback I get while gaming. With my mouse and mouse pad, I use Logitech. So the Logitech PowerPlay mouse pad will wirelessly charge my Logitech G703 and 903. So I switch off between those mice currently using the 703, which I can highly recommend uh, this headset keyboard mouse combo. And as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I do stream a lot on Twitch. I can link to that channel down below where I, we do play a lot of different games and test out all of these PC builds. So if you have any questions or anything like that, feel free to stop by and ask. And when it does come to that gaming, whether I'm playing, uh, you know, Warzone, Call of Duty, Fortnite, any game I throw at it, it handles very well, as expected. I mean, you have a 2080 Ti and the i9-10900K from Intel, the 10th gen. It just is crazy good. I mean, this PC is insane. Easily the best PC I have built thus far. I've even tested it in 1440p at 144 hertz and 1080p at 240 hertz, and it has handled it just fine. For the WD Black SN750 M.2 drives, with their software, you can turn on gaming mode, 
which will actually go ahead and make sure it stays at a stable speed for you. I have turned these on and have had zero issues with overheating. Nice, the motherboard does have that heat sink built in. And as for the CPU cooler, the Kraken Z63 from NZXT, I really do like having the display basically for the information that it gives me. I currently have it on CPU and GPU temps, which has been nice to kind of keep uh, an eye on it for this specific build, making sure everything is running smoothly. However, you can really customize different images, GIFs, whatever you want. And I do have to say it again, that Corsair Dominator RAM looks really good. I haven't even really touched the RGB lights. I kind of like how colorful it is, especially because with the white cables I've added, the black and white accent looks really good along with the blue fans I have spinning. And overall, that is it for now. I hope you enjoyed my video of this PC build. It was a lot of fun doing it. I like to continue to do these types of videos. So be sure to click that subscribe button. Be sure to give it a thumbs up as well. All of the products we talked about are linked in the description. So if you're interested in any of them, feel free to check out the description. They should be linked down below. And again, be sure to follow me on Twitch. I'll link to that channel down below. You can ask me questions there live as well. And as always, thanks for watching.